This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, I need a little more power in my wagon. We found some time to do a cinema vention. And when you did the cinema vention, did it have busted out windows? Because I had some busted out. I had some busted windows. Uh, no, but um, I did have to phone home. Oh, well. That could be a thing, and it'd be an even better thing if I had the proper profile selected on my Streamlabs so I could do this. And of course, you're not hearing it because it's going through the wrong input. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 270 for Thursday, the 14th of January, 2021. This is Short Two Lifelong Friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, and now we're on the right scene in, in OBS. Uh, what a... Well, holy... Sh- this Maybe this soju's hit me a little hard. Um, <laughs> and I'm Kent! Yeah, yeah like there's that Kent. That's, that's <laughs> Kent. Uh, hey, dude, only a month away from Valentine's Day. You got any big plans? Oh, phew, uh, no. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> uh, I'm not too late, am I? Uh, I mean, the the Valentine's candy's only been in the stores for about two months now, so uh, I, I right exactly depends on what you call <laughs> Valentine's candy, though. I mean, the candy in the heart shaped boxes, you know, that's that's uh, well. I was going to say they have, they have edible panties at the at the romance store year round. So is Valentine's ever out of season? I can say it, at Spencer's gifts, I thought they closed Spencer's. I mean, are malls even open anymore? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, they are because Spencer's is amazing. Um, so, dude, uh, uh, if you celebrate Valentine's Day, go ahead and email us and tell us your Valentine's uh, traditions because we don't celebrate Valentine's Day. It's, one is too close to our, our our anniversary or non-anniversary as it will be this year. Um, right. And two, it's fucking dumb. But anyway, I don't, I don't mean any flack is, against people is. that celebrate it. I just. I, I think the holiday is dumb and people that celebrate it are they're, they're celebrating uh, a dumb uh, holiday. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> nice cover there. Nice cover. Uh, wow, man. Um, tell me, tell me about your wagon. Does your wagon have enough power? It does not. It does not. <laughs> okay. Explain, I, sir. I drive a 2015 uh, Ram power wagon. It's a 2500 mm-hmm. chassis with a bunch of extra off-road stuff that I never really use, but it's nice to have. Like, mm-hmm. it has a winch built in, and the most the, the most I've ever done with the winch is pull out. Well, did I ever tell you the time I pulled out two trucks at once? Did I tell you about this? All I heard was all I heard was pull out of my winch. Oh. Um. But uh. Uh. Yes, I think you. I think you did tell me. You can uh, remind our audience about that occasion. That's a good idea. Uh, so my, my my truck has a winch mounted to the front of it. It's, it's a feature of the power wagon, and it's a, I don't know, it's a pretty heavy-duty winch. And I never used it to get myself unstuck, but I usually, in the winter times, at least twice a year, probably, I maybe not this year because I'm not driving as much, um, I winch out a car or a truck that's gotten stuck in the snow. Well, May around here is breakup season. It's when all the snow melts and all the mountain snow melts and everything else. It's basically just fucking mud everywhere in Alaska. And it creates all these little uh, little pockets of mud that people like to drive in in their trucks. And one of those is right outside of my little neighborhood. And I was driving through mm-hmm. one day mm-hmm. and there was a Ford trying to pull a Chevy out of the mud. But the Ford got stuck. <laughs> so I parked parked my Ram, you know, Dodge brand, right? I parked my Ram on the side of the road, tossed them the hook to my winch because I wasn't getting muddy. That he hooked it up to the Ford, and so I pulled the Ford pulling the Chevy, and I pulled both of them out at the same time. And that's like it sounds like a good setup to a joke. Uh, it, it probably it probably is. The Chevy guy was laughing his ass off the entire time. And at the end, I was like, "What's like? What are you laughing about? Is it you know? Because he apparently the Ford dude was laughing at the Chevy guy for getting stuck. Right, so when he right. got stuck, a Dodge had to pull up and pull both of them out. And yeah, that sounds right. And their yeah. their trucks were just like, it's not a big a big mud area. 
their trucks were completely covered, and you could tell that it was just from them trying to four wheel their way out. My truck had just gotten washed earlier that day, like literally that day. So my truck was in pristine, like out ter- inter- uh, exterior shape, <laughs> and it was just it was it was beautiful. Um, I forgot to get a picture though, so I guess it didn't happen. <laughs> Curtis the Rock in the chat says, your dick grew three sizes that day. Nah, maybe, but my balls shrunk, so I don't know if that helps. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I've, I've been lamenting about my truck because I don't, like, and this sounds so frivolous, and I don't give a shit, really. I don't have a heated steering wheel or heated seats. I don't have, like... Apple Play or CarPlay or whatever in my truck. Like, these are all things that I was looking at at doing, like modifying my truck to make happen. Mm. And we had talked about me maybe buying a new one. The 75th anniversary package just came out this year because it's the 75th anniversary of the Power Wagon. And Power Wagons are one of those cars that, like, you build loyalty because they're just amazing vehicles. Well, I had given up hope on getting a new one and moved on with my life. And my wife just paid my truck off not too long ago. Well, then she sends me a Facebook post saying, hey, they have your truck at at South Anchorage. And I was like, okay. And she's like, you want to go take a look at it? And I was like, I mean, I don't want to test myself, my my fortitude, by going (laughs) and looking at it and not buying it. So she said, well, you then you should probably just go ahead and head down there tomorrow. Call them, make sure it's available, and then just head down there tomorrow and see what's happening. Like, you sure? She goes, yeah. So I got a new power wagon. Uh, it's, a, it's a 2021 with the 75th anniversary package. It didn't have the safety package Good or the boy. towing package, but I can do without those. Um, and they gave me $29,000 for my old truck that we had just paid off. Oh, wow. So that brought the retail price considerably lower. Oh, of course. Yeah. What In what year was your old one your 20, quote old one 2015 yeah okay yeah wow okay that's uh that's incredible i've never i've never come close to seeing twenty nine thousand dollars for a trade-in right right it's uh yeah yeah so that was a twenty nine thousand dollar down payment i did on my truck jesus i don't even want to i don't even want to know what the full price of that vehicle is. so um, don't ask <laughs> yeah so i'm not gonna ask uh that's incredible dude uh my week uh i had a lot of fun over the last several days uh cinema vention is yeah. a podcast slash project that's run by w scott is one yep. which i know you are quite familiar with because you also have participated in not the same one that i did no uh, no but i earlier uh, not just earlier, the first one, the very first one, right? Yeah. So it's a great, it's a great little thing where because W. Scott is one is notorious for not having seen any movie. Like name a movie. He's, I, I guarantee I, Willie has not seen it. I would expand that and say that he doesn't have much of a, uh, 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 he doesn't have much of an experiential base for a lot uh, of of uh, cultural. Um, yeah, like pop culture yeah um, yeah uh exposure yeah he had a sheltered yeah. childhood and he's now experiencing things that are old hat to us for the first time pretty much every time we talk to him yeah pretty, pretty much, much anybody uh, anytime so, anyone talks to him really <laughs> I, was, I was telling somebody earlier was asking the question by earlier i mean the other day was asking if will had seen x movie and i said i responded by saying the infinite the infinitesimally smallest possible number greater than zero is the percent chance that he has seen it. Right. Yeah. And that's, um, that's, if you apply that to any movie across the board, you're going to be right. 99.9 repeating percent of the time. Yeah. I I was going to say any movie with any pop culture significance, but, it's it still says the same possibility like it's not yeah exactly exactly so so the the whole idea is that uh all of us in in uh the discord communities said you know what we need to have an intervention with with w scott is one we need to force him to watch these movies right 
So he decided to make a podcast of it. It would start with a watch party. And then like a day or two later, you would do a podcast, kind of like a recap show, get his thoughts on, on the movie. Yep. And the idea is that the, the person watching the movie with you is somebody who has seen the movie probably multiple times is probably a big fan of the movie so that they can bring some things to it that, um, you know, some insights and, and, and some things like that to the some show. Some cultural the relevance. Movie that I, that's right. The movie that I did was E.T. Oh. And it was super fun. Uh, not only the watch party was, was a blast, but also just, just sitting down for I, about an hour with, with W. Scott as one, discussing the movie and getting his his take and roasting him a couple of times for uh, for me not liking his take all that much. <laughs> I, 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 how, how many, I, I was just listening to the Ed main podcast, which by the way, I've got ideas on things. Um, mm. uh, how many movies were, were there about uh, uh, approximate how many movies would cause you to come to tears by watching the movie. Like how many movies are tear jerkers for you? Oh my God. I, I, dude, I can't even tell you it's in the, I mean, we're definitely in the dozens. Yeah. Um, scores. I, I, I couldn't even tell you. Okay. Um, I've, yeah, I, I, I don't even know. Like it, a lot of movies have made me cry. E.T. among them. Right. That And that's what I was going to say. It was of the movies that I've ever seen you cry in. I know E.T. is one of them. Like, <laughs> And and I, and if we've never watched the movie together, I just like inherently know that that's one of the movies that would cause you to tear up. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah, I will absolutely. say that uh, the older I get, the more likely a movie is to tear me up. Oh, that is one hundred percent true for me. Absolutely. Like, I don't know if that's being a dad and actually going through things, or if I'm slowly coming to terms with my own more approaching mortality. <laughs> Uh, I think it's all those. I think it's all those. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or a, a general degradation of my own personal masculinity. I don't know. I don't, I don't know where it is, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're right. I'm sure it's a combination of those factors, but, um, the movie that, that comes to my mind is, uh, no, there's not really one that comes to my mind. Um, actually, <laughs> I think the last movie I no, that's not true either. I don't remember the name of that one. But a movie that, that caused me to tear up with both joy and like realization of sadness at the same time is um oh what was that movie? She fights giants. It's a okay. movie I told you to watch not too long ago, and I I doubt you ever did. Uh no, I didn't. I, I do kind of remember you giving me a crazy ass title like that and it, that sounds right. That, but I definitely that, didn't watch it. That movie is, that movie was just amazing. Like it was really all the things that you want out of a movie. And yeah, that movie caused that. that I cried happy and sad tears at the same time on that movie. Yeah, um, that's uh, it's fantastic. Yeah. So, Sin of Invention, man, it's it's a it's a fun time. I haven't listened to anything since since the one that I was on, just because. I was gonna say because of him busy, well, but I just haven't fucking made so time. far. So far, that is the that is the only one released into the wild is the is episode one. Okay. Uh, this weekend, I believe episode two comes out, and then my episode will actually be episode three, which I think comes out next week. So who got the number uh, two spot? Uh, TSC and Sam. Oh, that makes with, sense. With with Back to the Future. That yep yep no that that does that yep. that does click okay. Cool. And you were, yeah, and you you were on the uh, episode one, like you said, that was released on Christmas Day that covered Die Hard. Die Hard, my favorite Christmas uh, movie. Which was a, yeah, and it was a it was a very fun episode to listen to, and I encourage everybody to go find this on your podcatcher of choice. Now, did you disagree Will with any of my points? Sure. Um, Other than the I fact that it's a, a Christmas good. movie, because you don't think it's a Christmas movie. I, I think that's a good good post show topic actually <laughs> uh, because I do have some thoughts. <laughs> um, um, yeah, but uh, but yeah, so yeah, your podcast your choice, Cinema Vention is the name of the show. Go check it out, Amos. You talked about how last week uh, your computer just kind of took a dump. You wanna you wanna kind of walk kind of walk us through what what happened there? What kind of disaster I, took place? I don't know, but I know that um, 
when I came into Windows uh, safe mode, it would work fine. The, the problem last week was only one monitor, well, two monitors of the three were showing up, but it wasn't showing anything on it but the, but uh, a single icon. Mm. And the third monitor, which I is my main monitor, was not coming on at all. Like it wouldn't recognize anything. But then I hit control delete and all the monitors would do what they're supposed to do. So hmm. I figured it was probably a driver issue, something along those lines. Couldn't figure out which driver it was. I tried different things. Go into safe mode and it would work fine. So I was fairly certain it was a driver issue, not a hardware issue, which I initially thought it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I said, fuck it, and just reinstalled Windows. <laughs> initially, I reinstalled Windows over top the installation, and that basically wiped out all my programs but didn't delete anything. And then I took mm. what I could off that, my you know documents, things like that, off that hard drive, you know, which is a, a, an SSD. Took all the stuff off there that I could salvage, that I knew to salvage, which I ended up missing my uh, my Streamlabs, or not Streamlabs, my Stream Deck profiles. I didn't have all of those ah. saved, which is the problems with the show music starting today and everything else. Um, but after that, I went through and reformatted the drive and reinstalled Windows and... Everything's working fine, but it's one of those things you don't know what you don't know. So I don't know what I need to install until I actually need to install it. <laughs> right, right. Like, I forgot all about installing NDI tonight, which is why the first half of the show is just me troubleshooting fucking Skype video. <laughs> you know, right. little sh silly shit like that. And uh, it, it's super annoying, but uh, that's part of the install process. I did. So every time I've installed Windows lately, it's just worked. Like all the things just work. For whatever reason, this time installing Windows didn't install the Realtek uh, audio drivers for my motherboard. And it took me a little while to figure that out, that one out, which was fucking annoying as hell. Um, which I don't understand why I didn't install it, but they work fine now. Whatever. So that was yeah. my oh, that was my thing of the week. Um yeah. Oh, and I uh, I found a way to install a Minecraft server on my Synology NAS. So now I have a Minecraft server that's not that that isn't relying on leaving a fucking powerful computer on all the time. It's already it's on a computer that's already on. And as much as I thought it would, it's not like tapping resources very much. Of course, it's just me and my daughter playing on it. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I thought that was pretty cool too. Actually, figuring out how to do that, and I didn't figure it out. I found someone who had figured it out. And then adapted that to make it work for myself. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what I've been doing this week as far as the geeky world. That and enjoying a lot of CES <laughs> bullshit. Uh, a bunch of vaporware TVs that'll show up in about five years, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the easiest thing that I've been doing this week is uh, I started re-watching the DCEU movies. So starting okay. with the with, with Man of Steel. Um now is is that the official reboot? Is Man of Steel? That's the uh, like that's because I I know that's, MCU is like pretty easy to define and blah 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 blah, but DCEU is a little bit yeah a little more because they have uh, little, they have all these different like multiverses and and all this kind of stuff. Like right. for example, you've got Arrowverse, which is like the CW TV series. Those are all in what they're calling the the Arrowverse. Uh, they're all within continuity with each other. But then you've got DCEU, which is Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, you know, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, those movies uh, that are all in a continuity together. But then they have crossover events where they have the multiverse concept where uh, a character can cross into like the dimension where the other characters exist and things like that, right? Okay. So, so Spider-Verse equivalent. Yeah, kind of, yeah. And well, and, and MCU is getting into that in a bigger way as well with with their mainline movies. Um, in fact, one of the one of the upcoming movies is called Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness. Hmm. So it's like they're they're going full on into multiverse, and DC and Marvel are both uh, jumping straight into it. Uh, but there's a there's a new cut of of um, Justice League coming out in a couple of months okay um, if you've been on the internet at all over the last couple of years you probably heard of the snyder cut it's actually coming to hbo max in march i believe and to get ready for that because i've basically forgotten th that justice league even existed like that movie <laughs> i don't know if i hated it that much 
or if it bored me that much or or Wait. I hit my head. I don't know, but I basically don't remember the movie. So, so Man, you're saying Man of Steel is the starting point for it. Are the Dark Knight yeah. series part of the DC? Nope. nope. So that's standalone. Those don't exist. Yep. So as far as the cinematic university universe for DC goes, that's not canon. That's right. Okay. I I'm I I didn't like the Dark Knight movies because I I don't like the lead actor. What the fuck is his name? Christian Bale. Yeah, I fucking he reminds me of Ward Burton. He talks with his mouth not moving. It fucking freaks me out. It weirds me out. It's like a <laughs> it's like a reverse Muppet. Like you know how Muppets their eyes don't move, but their fucking mouth is like way too articulated. Christian Bale is the opposite. His eyes are like always talking, but his mouth barely fucking moves, and it's just it, it's unnerving to me. But, <laughs> I don't even know what those movies were about other than like Heath Ledger fucking died after making the first one. Like that's, that's where I go with it. And Heath Ledger's in one of my fucking favorite movies of all time. 10 things I hate about you. So that's the only reason I even know he's in it because I care. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't do the Christian Bale movie. So maybe now that I know those aren't Canon as far as the current Canon, like I don't know how many cannons they want to have, but um, <laughs> I, I'm I, okay. Okay. So, so Man- well, how do you feel about how do you feel about Ben Affleck? I, because he's the D, he's the DCEU Batman. I like Ben Affleck. I have no problems with Ben Affleck. <laughs> I didn't really care who he was until uh, Goodwill Hunting, and since then I've kind of everything that I've seen him in, he's done well in. So I, I don't have any problems with him. I mean, yeah. he's I'll, no uh, them apples. He he he's he's no uh, what, what's the other guy that's in Goodwill Hunting? Matt, Matt Damon. Uh, he's Matt he's Damon? no Matt yeah. Damon. Matt Damon. But I mean, <laughs> until until a uh, Benifer Affleck comes out with a Bourne movie that's as good as the Bourne trilogy, he's not going to be Matt Damon. That's just that. Uh, that's right. That <laughs> right. Uh, so so anyway, the uh, the second movie of the series is Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice. And okay. I had a lot of problems with that movie when it came out. Yeah, a lot uh, of people did. But that said, I, I'd watched the movie several times because it started as a hate watch uh, <sighs> when I saw it on, I think it was on HBO. I, it started as a hate watch. I, I just wanted to to just watch it again and, and just point out the things that I hated about it. Right. But the I, I couldn't make that excuse for the second time I rewatched it. What what it if a, kind of what if a hate watch movie. what if a hate watch was similar to a hate fuck? <laughs> I mean, it kind like, of that's that's kind of what it. Became but but you're me. not like imagine imagine like you just you hook up with someone that you used to hook up with and you just fucking you just hate them now. So while you're hooking up, like while you're doing your thing, <laughs> you're like critiquing them the entire time, and then it just turns into like a fetish relationship, right? Where you just like you know I. I, I just I hate myself right now, so I'm gonna go talk about how much I hate this other person while they're servicing me. You know, like I get uh, that's, man. That's exactly that exactly describes my first rewatch of Batman v Superman. <laughs> I mean, can you believe this? Can you believe? First of all, they named the damn movie Batman v Superman. Like this is some kind of some kind of court trial or something. Like what the hell is going on? Uh, yeah, that was totally me. It was totally a hate. Fight. And by the end of the movie, you're like. My God, you would expect to see this in a good crime thriller. Oh, <laughs> wait a second. No, wait a minute. <laughs> oh man. But even so, I, I still had a lot of problems with that movie. So when I got to it, it, it like I said, it's the second movie in my in my rewatch of DCEU, and I got to it, and the only thing that HBO Max has is the Ultimate Edition, which I had never seen. Mm. So it's the it's basically like the director's cut. They okay. added in a bunch of scenes and extended scenes. Well, they un- they undeleted scenes. a bunch of scenes. Basically, yeah. And most of the problems that I had with that movie no longer exist. Oh, Be- because the 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 scenes that they cut out or the scenes that they shortened had explanatory had exposition in them. So. So you watched the studio cut and hated it, watched the director's cut and loved it. Basically. Yeah. Yes. No, because studios yes. are trash. The the ultimate edition is that is the version to watch. Like don't if you don't have the ultimate edition, just don't even bother watching it. Like just don't. 
but get the ultimate edition, which if you have HBO Max, that's the version that they have. So you're saying I can uh, invest three hours or I can waste two and a half. That's right. That's exactly correct. <laughs> it's exactly correct. Okay. Now, uh, the DCU, is that what it is? The DC, DCEU. DCEU. The, the, the DC ex- Extended Universe, I think okay. is what they call it. What does DC stand for? Uh, Detective Comics. Okay. No, that makes sense. That, 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 it, it, well, it's like KFC now. Like, it doesn't actually stand for that anymore. Right. But it's a, it, the origin of the name is Detective Comics. Or HP. That's right. Yep. Yeah, because anyway. Um, all right. So is Wonder Woman 84 part of the DCEU? I'm assuming it is. It is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, DCEU is trash. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, Wonder Woman 84 is trash. Uh, uh, Wonder DCEU Woman 84. Wonder Woman 84 has so many fucking problems from so many different angles. Me, a bona fide asshole. Richard, a gay dude, and Jenny, a Jewish Russian uh, lady, are going to get on a fucking episode of Let's Not Talk About Star Wars specific for that fucking movie as soon as Richard gets his podcast life back together and he's not in vacation with Edward anymore. Um. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that should be a lot of fun because that's a that will be a hate fuck if you ever. If oh you ever, my god. Uh, 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 but I will uh, say yes, I will yes. Say, having having Gal Gadot in a re, like having a review of a movie with Gal Gadot and the storyline from Wonder Woman eighty four, I think hate fuck is probably the most. Yeah, that that's the I mean, most that's descriptive. I think that's a good tweet right there. Wonder Woman eighty four is a hate fuck. Just, <laughs> just leave it there. Um, it's, it's like the uh, the meme of uh, Wonder Woman eighty four is a hate fuck. Send tweet. <laughs> um, I I I yeah, gotta say it, I'm gonna give a slight preview here. Wonder Woman eighty four, watching Gal Gadot on screen, and then the fact that she took uh, 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 Diane Prince, or Diana Prince, it's Diana Prince, Diana Prince, Diana Prince took yeah. Diana Prince. And really evolved Diana Prince as a character during the script of WW84. Like, my brain wasn't happy. <laughs> it really wasn't. Like, Gal Gadot is a beautiful woman. She, she's amazing on screen. Her presence is great. Like, she does all the things that you expect a top-rated... Uh, uh, high, uh, uh, I wouldn't say attractive, but high, uh, highly esteemed actress would do. Like she did all the things. Like it was, it was just, it was out of the park. Um, but with that script, it was like the oxytocin was going, and the 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 hate pheromone, mm-hmm. whatever that is, was going at the same time. And I, I'm gonna have to watch it again to try to see if those resolve, but I don't think they will. Uh, yeah, and that's that's going to be the culmination of my rewatch. I'm about halfway through it now, and I need to get through it before the end of the month because that's when when WW84 is taken off of HBO Max, at least temporarily. Uh, that's when it's taken off my HBO Max because that's when my subscription ends. Oh, see, I, I bought the discounted uh, uh, six month thing for like sixty percent of the price or whatever. That'd have been great if uh, that was available at the day that I decided to purchase. <laughs> yeah, but it's um it's a thirty day um uh window or whatever hmm. for uh for the movies I'm being on HBO Max. Um so anyway, so so after all that, uh, if you want a, a DCEU movie to just just watch, just have a good fucking time, it's Birds of Prey. Like that is my recommendation from DCEU. If you just want to have fun watching a movie, fuck everything else, fuck the continuity, fuck this fuck everything. I just want to have fun for 2 hours. Birds of Prey. So so you're telling you're t- you're taking me from a show where Gal Gadot is the main actress on screen, and I'm trying to be politically correct and and not be the the horn dog that I can typically be, um, in 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 saying that she's very attractive, not just as an actress, but just as a female form, um, and then you're gonna go from that to a movie starring Journey Smollett. Like, what are you doing to me right now, dude? <laughs> hey, I'm just telling you, it's a fun movie. 
you uh, can watch that movie. You could just listen to the movie, like with your eyes closed, and you're gonna have a good time. It's, I've it's, I've heard so many sound clips when I was doing the motherly podcast, and she appeared that, it, yeah, I had to find a sound clip for it, and end up not using my sound clip in the episode. But she's on that podcast, and I edited it, and I'm really proud of that. Um, not really, because it's bad recording. But uh, I Birds of Prey is on my short list of movies to watch. It's pretty fun. Uh, one because um, Margot Robbie, I don't. A lot of people are like, "Oh my gosh, she's so hot." I don't think she's hot, but I think she's fun to watch. She is an amazing actress that keeps me engaged in something that I normally wouldn't be. Um, like what was the first one, Suicide Squad? Like it didn't really do. Yeah. Like the story was cool, but it wasn't like engaging. But her being on screen, her presence on screen is just remarkable. Yeah, I actually that that's uh yesterday I think I I rewatched Suicide Squad and it's my opinion didn't change about that one. I uh was like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh but but I do I do uh agree with you about Margaret Robbie though. Fun to watch. Uh Will Smith was fine. Um in fact, most of the most of the performances were fine. Yeah. Um it's fine. It's like right in the middle for me. It's fine. I uh, if I had to give it a high note though this the special effects at the end with the witch that uh, whole section was pretty fucking remarkable like that was well done yeah yeah I think all the the witch special effects in that movie were pretty pretty good um, but if if you guys like things that are just fine <laughs> head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery <laughs> wow free shows free shows post shows exclusive interviews uh, all for just the for the low price of whatever you want to give us. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I promised this a while ago, but uh, as we'll talk about later, um, I am going to release the dark corner of my soul this quarter. Okay. This quarter. Are so- you gonna are Are you gonna elaborate, or or is that? Uh- left for us all to find out the dark corner of my soul is a poetry book that i wrote uh squid has actually read Mm. most of them in fact because he did some Mm. he actually did some copy editing on the ones that i had time to have copy editing done um it's a poem book that i wrote in high school for a art project for a english language art project and it has been expanded upon in in the years but it's uh I maybe I'm partial, but I thought they were pretty pretty decent. And Kent, you've you've read some of my early poetry. I say early as if there was a late era, but there's just the early. <laughs> era. Um, right. You've read some of it. It's not bad. I mean, it's not great, but it's not bad. But it will be yours to enjoy, uh, probably in PDF because I don't have time to get an ebook set up. Um, but it'll be in the treasure chest this quarter, as in before the end of March. Uh, for all patrons. That is freaking awesome. And that is at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah. And I will I will uh, showcase some of them on, on anthonylemos.com just because as I review them and, and do the editing and make sure they're all tip top shape for the for the patrons or for the patrons, um, I will probably find a few to break out and kind of give an explainer to and that'll be on anthonylemos.com. But all of them in their rawest form will be available on our Patreon in the treasure chest. Excellent. Which, Kent, if you want to add to your list, because I'm not going to remember mine because Soju is kicking my ass. Um, we need to resend a link to the uh, to the treasure chest to our patrons because it's pretty buried. Like It's not easy to find in there. So, Good call. I will write that down. Uh, and by the way, speaking of soju, I have uh, I didn't finish the strawberry. I got about halfway through it. Um, I did start the plum. And I didn't know if I'd like the plum. And the plum tastes like haichu. You know the candies? Haichu? The candies? I don't know it. Oh, haichu is a candy that's amazing. And... Um, and it's gonna yes. be it's gonna be a hell of a post show. Yes, I so. can't wait. <laughs> so let's God. uh all right. God go damn. ahead and hit that other go ahead and hit that other button. You, you got to give me a second to hit the other button because uh 
I still don't have my stream deck fucking unfucked. Here we go. All right, this is the part of the show where Kent comes up with a game probably today, probably ripped off from some website somewhere, and probably <laughs> not that interesting. But if it is interesting, <laughs> my answers are going to make up for it. And if it is interesting, he's just going to show how stupid I am. So that's that's the promise we give you. <laughs> and now, Kent, it is up to you to deliver such things. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, this week's game is called sidekick or side shit oh so um, right. i did not steal this one from a website i made this one up this is uh i i listed some sidekicks out here for comic book characters some of them are real and some of them are not so you okay. just have to tell me if it's real sidekick okay pretty simple all right so we'll we'll start with this one Captain America's sidekick, Free Spirit. Is that real or not real? Uh, Free Spirit is a side shit, but uh, I would say that Free Spirit would be a a young man, probably in his uh, late teens, early 20s that okay. specializes in empathy. Okay. Um, so you're actually incorrect. Free Spirit is a real sidekick to Captain America. Uh, Free Spirit was a female sidekick to Captain America introduced in 1994. Um, that's just sexist. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's, that's why that character doesn't really exist anymore. It says, attractive in her scantily clad outfits... Free Spirit added nothing to the comic book series and was a blatant attempt to attract more male readers. Yeah. Kent, do you um, get turned on by uh, by by animated or um, uh, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Like drawn, uh, scantily clad um, women. Like is that? Is I mean, that I would say it's theoretically possible. Um, I know, like when I was a kid, like I, Jessica Rabbit turned me on. Right, but I mean, she was she was uh, uh, artificially engineered to strike at the hearts of ten and eleven years olds. <laughs> For sure, they had just discovered the penises. Right, right. Um, all right, so your second sidekick, Eager Leopard, sidekick of Black Panther. That sounds dumb. Oh wait, that didn't tell you if it's real or not, right? Uh, <laughs> All right, that's right. <laughs> um, uh, what was the eager? Eager leopard. Eager leopard is a side shit, but if it was a real sidekick, um, eager leopard would be. This has to be like a like a an eleven year old boy. That uh, that always wants to do everything that the big kids are doing, but always like like it's an eleven year old boy, eleven year old male MacGuffin, is what it is. That's that's what I'm going to go with. I I, I I think you understand what I mean by that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, and you are correct. Actually, it's uh, um, it is a male MacGuffin. Uh, it is a side shit, uh, completely made up. All right, for the next one, we when, have... When's the last time you had to explain what a MacGuffin was to somebody? And did you succeed? Um, oh, I totally succeeded because it's a, it's an easy expl explanation. Okay, explain uh, it to me, and I will take it in the sense of the person I least, last had to explain it to and tell you if you succeeded or not. Okay, it's a, it's a plot device of uh, the thing that you are after. Like it could be literally anything. It's not important what it is. The story is about getting the thing. So it's an object. The thing is, usually, I mean, it can be a person. It could, but it's it's typically like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, or uh, or um, let me go back. Raiders of the Lost Ark. The MacGuffin is the Ark of the Covenant. 
um, in, um, I don't know, I'm drawing a blank now. Um, any movie where you're seeking a thing or going after a thing, that thing is the MacGuffin. It could, you could have the exact same story and have a different object. That's a MacGuffin. Now I have a question for you. Is the MacGuffin necessarily necessary for the movie? Because um, I've always taken MacGuffins as something to push the plot forward that wasn't necessary for the movie. I mean, it really depends. Like the on Ark what the of the Covenant is. was kind of a necessary piece to drive that story along. It wasn't necessarily a MacGuffin. It was a central idea no, to the totally movie. The movie wasn't about the Ark of the Covenant. The movie was an adventure story about Indiana Jones going after a thing and and fighting Nazis on the way. It could have easily been the Holy Grail at that point. Well, no, that was, been, that was a later movie. Liter- no, I know, but it, it that movie could have been the same movie, but the relic at the end could have been something other than the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, in that sense, they so were all. Totally... I, I don't. I don't know. We'll have to discuss that later. Okay, next question. Yeah. All right, the Gentle Master, Doctor Strange's sidekick. I'm going to say that is a sidekick. And you would be incorrect. I made up the Gentle Master. What do you what are you really wishing for, Kent? <laughs> I want someone to to acquire mastery over the gentle arts. <laughs> I, I, you have someone for that. You need to. If, I mean, maybe you need to lower to your expectations. <laughs> right. All right. Number four, we have Aqua Girl, the sidekick, of course, of Aquaman. That's that's legit. Yes, uh, Aqua Girl is real. She wears seashells in all the wrong places. <laughs> all right, next up, we have Crypto the Super Dog. That's legit. Superman. And you are correct. Crypto is real. Stop naming the ones I know. Uh, all right. Next up, we have Hawkeye's sidekick, Electric Arrow. That sounds like bullshit. Okay. That is correct as well. You notice I'm not um, even continuing the bit anymore. I'm just. Just getting through the quiz. All right, next up we have Uncle Marvel, which is uh, the sidekick of Captain Marvel. I just realized this might be the first time I've abandoned a bit and you've kept, you you didn't, like, instead of you. <laughs> Usually you're the one that abandons the bit, but whatever. What was the, what was the question? All right, Captain Marvel. Like, so when I say Captain Marvel in this sense, I'm talking about the DC one, the Shazam Captain Marvel. Uh, Captain Marvel sidekick, Uncle Marvel. That sounds like bullshit, but so does the whole DC Shazam thing, so whatever. <laughs> uh, no, Uncle Marvel is a real sidekick of, of Captain Marvel. That's dumb. <laughs> All right, uh, we're, in the, we're in the home stretch now. All right, the sidekick of Galactus, Earth Killer. What kind of fucking name is that? <laughs> I would Rochambeau you over that name. Like that is that that name is bullshit. That name deserves okay. a kick in the nuts. Okay, so you're you're saying that this one's a side shit? Yeah, that, uh, is that like the little? That might be a better sidekick to Star Killer base. <laughs> okay, all right, you're correct. Um, all right, second to last, your penultimate sidekick is Wolverine's sidekick, Lucky Lion. Oh my God! Wolverine would hate someone called Lucky Lion. So I'm going to say it's real. <laughs> you should have stuck with your initial notion there. It is not real. Your final. You have to understand that I hate every version of Wolverine I've ever experienced, except for lo- uh, the the latest incarnation by what's his nuts in Logan. Yes. What's that dude's name? You don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 I would if you didn't ask me that. Right. Uh, I'll know it here in a second. Actually, when Squid types it in the chat, I'll. Know. <laughs> right. uh, for, your, for your final, <laughs> for your final sidekick, Batman's trusty sidekick, Ace the Bat Hound. That sounds stupid, but I'm gonna say real because I think we're. I, I'm gonna gamify it. <laughs> yes, uh, Ace is is a real sidekick of Batman. And Squid said he's not saving you. Fuck you, Squid. <laughs> um, but do you know what this means? You got six of them correct. I got the Anyways, D! You, 
<laughs> you got the D. Oh, this is what we need. We need we need uh, Big Voice J to create us a a got the D sounder. Yeah. Well, I I don't even know if it had to be. You no, know, maybe he could create it, but I don't know if it'd be Big Voice J's voice. Okay. Like, like I'm feeling like. Hear me out. What if we had Crunchy saying it? Okay. And then Jackie with a reply, like, oh my. <laughs> I, All right, this sounds like a good post show workshopping. I'm just spitballing here. All right. We're going to go with that. So the, the dude that plays Wolverine in Logan. Um, all his versions of Wolverine are amazing. Like that's exactly how in my brain Wolverine works out. Every other version of Wolverine I've ever experienced has been shit compared to that. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at with Wolverine. Even though I can't remember the dude's name. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. Yes. I think, I think a lot of people would agree with you on that. Like that just, he plays that fucking role. Perfect. He's got the angry face, the shitty sideburns, like all of it. Anyway, okay. Um, so I got the D. Now let's talk about uh, our main topic for the night. Yes, Amos, tell us about yearly themes. No. Um, I'm going to okay. ask you about New Year's resolutions. Ah, do you Those make them? No one. Oh, hell no. Uh, I was going to say, I was going to describe New Year's resolutions as those things that no one ever keeps. Okay. When's the last time you made a New Year's resolution? I couldn't even tell you. It's been that long. It's been that long. So you're talking like third grade or some shit when you first found out about him. You're like, oh my God, this is so cool. Um, Maybe not quite as far back as that. Maybe like in high school or something. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I've, I've probably said some things aloud, like um, I'm going to drink less beer this year or something, you know, something like that. Right. But actually saying, you know what? All right. I'm doing it this year. Got my New Year's resolutions. I'm going to keep them. No, like, like junior high, probably. Okay. I used to make him every year as kind of a kind of a thing that I knew wasn't going to happen. So they mm -hmm. went from, I'm going to go to the gym uh, at least, you know, twice a week and eventually became, I'm going to drink a fifth of vodka every fucking Friday. Like, you know, it was just kind of like, a, <laughs> like right. I knew it wasn't going to happen. Um, I actually kept the last New Year's resolution I made. Hmm. I made one one year, and the next year I made one more, and I've kept both of them. In 2009, my, re my New Year's resolution was to get my passport. I got it in March that year. In 2010, my New Year's resolution it was to never make another New Year's resolution. Fucking hmm. won it. Nice. Well done. Yeah. Now, I have said things that people could take as resolutions. Like, uh, at one point, I was like, I'm going to lose 15 pounds this year. Um, but I didn't say that's my New Year's resolution, so I think that still counts. Yeah, I mean, setting a goal doesn't make it a, a New Year's resolution. Well, I'm here to tell you that New Year's resolutions are dead. They're dumb. They're fucking retarded. We all know that shit. Right. So, what? So I mean, if I want to set a goal, if I want to be better... Uh, what should I do if I'm not going to do a resolution? You should make a yearly theme. Okay, like like a like a theme song. Like uh, I'm going to write a a song about um, man. I no. really hope 2021 is better can't, than can't, 2020. Can't, can't, like that? Can't, like, uh, no, oh. and you can't you can't put that shitty shanty that you just tried to fucking make up in your head. <laughs> To porn music, <laughs> you, like you can't get like some baseline funk in there and make that cool. It's just never going to happen. No, a yearly theme. This is an idea that came onto me by someone that you fucking don't like, and that's CGP Gray. And originally, <laughs> he, it came he, out. He makes a he makes a great YouTube video. Yeah, he doesn't make a great podcaster, <laughs> and that's fine in your opinion. 
Um, <laughs> yearly themes are away, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll in fact, we'll, you're slacking off, and W is not here, so I gotta post the fucking, I gotta post the shit myself. This is bullshit. Oh, I could do it. No, I'm oh, already fucking it? halfway yeah. there and shit, dude. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, you, you're too busy trying to combat <laughs> me on the fucking. Hi, beat you, bitch. Um, imagine a place where every year you made a statement of intent without defining pass fail marks and the year could begin any fucking time you wanted and Mm. last as much time as you want. I um this this seems like a an achievable goal to okay. me because I could say I I am going to drink less beer tomorrow. I could go 24 hours with drinking less beer than I have had in the previous 24 hours. That sounds wonderful. Right, right. Now now you're getting you're getting pedantic, but um <laughs> So you could do like a, a a seasonal theme or a yearly theme. You could do a decade mm-hmm. theme if you really wanted to, but who the fuck wants to keep track of shit for that long? The idea is that instead of setting goals that are pass fail, like I will lose 15 pounds by the end of the year, you'll make it a little bit more general to where I will, you know, lose weight this year. Well, that's still kind of specific because it's still based on, on like a... If you don't lose weight, then you're still failing, right? Right. What, you you want to you want to you want to more like you want to open the topic up, make it a little more general, right? Um, like I want to live a healthier, or I want to make healthier choices in twenty one. Right, right, right. No, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. And especially like if you watch this video, it just be, it becomes well maybe because I've already I've had several discussions about it and kind of thought about it and everything else. It makes perfect sense when you watch the fucking video. It's not about setting a definite goal that has a pass fail marker or a certain quantitative mark that you should you should get to. It's about trending. Right. It's about trending towards something that you want to be. And it's not just a marker of this particular year. It's literally about lifestyle changes and choices. So you could say I want to be I want to live a healthier life. Like I want to I want this this is going to be the year because this is how you name it. This is going to be the year of health. Mm-hmm. And you keep that in your mind and then as things occur, you're presented with two meal options. Yeah, I could have either one, but it's the year of health. I'm going to go ahead and choose the healthier choice. You don't always have to choose the healthier choice, but you're going to try to tend towards that direction. Mm-hmm. Now, halfway through the year, you get a car accident, your legs get chopped off, you can't go to the gym anymore. Does that mean that your year of health has failed? No. I bet, it, but but you definitely lost weight. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> fair. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It just means that you need to kind of redirect. And that's really what it is. It's a matter of, of slowly redirecting your life to be something more of what you want it to be and less of the things that you don't want it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, a year of health could be, I'm, you know, my, I would like to smoke less. Hint, hint. So as you get towards the end of the year, you find that you are smoking less because you're making the decision one cigarette at a time. You're like, you know what? I could smoke or maybe I could just take a walk around the block, you know? Right, right. But it's about the small choice. It's not about, hey, I'm going to forego smoking the entire day or, hey, I'm going to work out for three hours today. It's about I'm g- uh, just the small incremental choices. You know, every choice that you make, you can just kind of lean that direction. If you don't always make it, then you don't always make it. There's no pass fail. There's no hard markers. <clears throat> now, if you watch the video, you'll you'll understand all this way better than I could explain it on a bottle of soju. But <laughs> it's, it's about... Uh, about the trend line and having a focus for that trend line. And you start with one and then the next year you continue the first one if it's applicable because sometimes it's it's a shorter term thing. And you start you add a new one and you kind of move on in that direction as well. I have decided 
my 2021 theme for the year. And I would like, Kent, I know you watched the video earlier today. Yep. Um, I'm going to give you a homework assignment that by next week you have your own theme. Oh, I okay. Or have you already picked one? I, I've got one. Oh, okay, okay, perfect. So do you want to go first or you want me to go first? I'll go first because it's, uh, it's, it's real easy to get through. I want to travel more. I want 2021 to be more about travel. So this is, this I know is, that's kind of a cop out because we were right, uh, but jailed for most. Well, of I was going to ask: Is this the year of, of uh, like? Have you named it? First of all, um, I mean, no, because uh, not I mean, really. I, I the easy answer would be: This is the year of travel, and then as you're going through life, yes. you're trying to think of travel in your mindset. But is is it travel or is it exploration? Is it? new places like is, is there a certain focus or is it just to get the fuck out of alamogordo as much as possible uh, that one <laughs> yes Le- yes so opportunities to leave alamogordo take them okay um, that's, that's gonna be my my uh my uh, where i want to trend so like you're talking about you, you know you reach a decision tree should i go to this place or should i not go to this place i should be leaning toward go to the place okay simply because it meets my theme of travel right travel more okay. right okay um i have chosen one that's a little more day-to-day that has a little bit more of a of course i mean i've been listening to this and considering this longer but uh, something that has more of an effect on my day-to-day decisions than just the occasional trip possibilities which i'll give you this year next year you have to amp it up a little bit this year for me is the year of commitment. Okay. One of the problems I have is that I like to create things. I don't like to maintain them because they end up boring me. I like to establish relationships and then I don't maintain them because they bore me. Uh, And this isn't, this isn't against anyone else. It's more against myself because it's just my personality type. Mm-hmm. Like I have a relationship with Squid. We've known each other since high school. I haven't maintained it because I haven't been personally invested in that relationship. It's, you know, like I haven't I haven't invested into it. So I haven't gotten anything out of it that I needed because I haven't put anything into it that, that needed to be fostered and, and, and grown. Right, right. And that's just that's that's the easy example because he's the one that just just popped it up. Um but the year of commitment for me, like I want to commit dedicated time to this podcast not because I want it to become the next night attack, but because I want it to become its own thing. And right now in in my mind it kind of seems like it's just middling along, like we're just doing the show. It's not we're we're not we're not building into the show. And at least me, I'm not building into the show as much as I could. I'm not spending the time that I could, the ideas that I could, the thought process as I could. And I don't have the passion towards it that I should. I want to change that. I want to change that in different things. Some things have already started. Like I've been, I don't, I haven't been talking about this, but I've been getting up at four o'clock in the morning because for whatever reason, my mind says, Hey, it's time to wake up been getting up at four o'clock in the morning have a little time to myself drinking you know doing my the equivalent of a cigarette and a coffee uh although i don't drink coffee or smoke cigarettes but the equivalent thereof <laughs> um you know mm-hmm. a mountain dew and a vape but um and you know check the news and, smoking a pancake yeah yeah smoking a pancake i mean that's that usually sets off the alarm which wakes everybody up kind of pisses people off whatever <laughs> um but I've been doing that and that gives me time to wake up. And then suddenly my wife is about to get up. So I'll go ahead and make her breakfast, make her coffee, make sure that she, when she goes to leave the house, she's leaving in the best possible shape that she can leave. And then I get the kids ready and then it's my time again. I'm really enjoying that. Like I, I love maybe, maybe this is simp behavior or whatever the fuck you idiots want to call it out there. But 
I, as a husband, love to serve my wife. That is like an ultimate pleasure to me. Not just serve her the dick, because I barely even get that done, but <laughs> just as because she's she's an active service kind of person. Her love language is active acts of service. And I love doing that. Like that is that fulfills me, that that rejuvenates my inner spirit, you know. Um I want to spend that type of thought on several different aspects of my life. This podcast, the streamathon, these are just things that Diamond Club would care about. Other shows that I have ideas for and I have things that I think might help the creators. Not that I'm going to be like, hey, you should do all my shit, but just little ideas, things that I've learned over the, over the years of doing this show and doing my other projects. Commitment to my business. Like I haven't gotten any new clients since last March when I've fired uh harry Littman because he was just a pain in my butt um but i haven't reached out to try to find anything else either i want to commit myself a little bit to that like i just want to not spend so much time in my own wallowing and my own little i just need to pass the day mindset and i want to really spend time building things and and giving people my time not just my number you know, okay. um, mm-hmm. so yeah, the, the year of commitment, I want to commit to things and make sure that they happen and make sure they build and make sure they grow. So that is my theme for the year. That's beautiful. Um, if, if people wanted to follow your progress, where might they do that? Anthony com. Another thing I need to commit a little more time to, because <laughs> I promised you last week I'm... that I was going to post on Friday and then. Kind of shit went I'm, haywire. I'm happy that it exists now and that you have a place for for those things, your photography and your thoughts and things. Like that. Um, it's it's thrilling to me that, that it's there at all. So any updates that you have, right. uh, would be absolutely awesome. I, um, I I wanna I wanna outwardly commit. I know I, I I fucked this up last week, but um I wanna outwardly commit to a post a week, whether that's photography with no narrative, photography with narrative, or just a fucking narrative. Like I've got three things in my brain right now that need to come out and I just haven't sat down and made the time for them. Um, one of them, uh, yeah. Yeah, my my retirement speech, it, I know a lot of you haven't seen it. Now maybe I'll post that in Patreon too, my retirement speech. Um, yeah. My retirement speech echoes thoughts of the joint chiefs of staff this week to an eerie fucking level and i know you saw the letter kent the joint chiefs of staff um Mm -hmm. they they are the the heads the military heads of all the departments of defense like uh the department of the navy department of the army department of the marine corps which is part of the navy which is fucking stupid uh, the Coast Guard guy, which also part of the Navy, but it's his own dude. Uh, Department of the Air Force, and then the Department of the Space Force, which is like part of the Air Force, the same way the Marines are. Anyway, it's fucking stupid. The main military people from those, and then their civilian equivalents. Well, I don't think the civilians actually had anything. The secretaries didn't do shit. It was just the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The, the so all right, so so the, the Joint Chiefs of Staff issued a letter that you're referring to, and then the following day, the Secretary of the Air Force issued a letter to the Air Force and Space Force. Okay, uh, that you probably didn't see. I did not. No, okay. I'm I'm not on that email chain anymore. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the Joint Chiefs of Staff. A lot of what they said in there, especially their last paragraph or two, echoed a lot of what a lot of the sentiment that I had in my retirement speech. And I the, that post is well, brewing on how I want to present it, but that's one of the posts that's going to kind of come to my website soon. Yeah, and and I mean your retirement speech mostly just reflected the oath that everyone in the military took, right? Multiple times throughout their careers, if they if they if they enlisted more than once or uh, renewed their commission more than once. Um, right. Yeah, I, good stuff. I look forward to I look forward to reading your thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, Kent, where can people find you in your uh, astounding 280 character <laughs> per per time thoughts? 
RM underscore Del Noche. Uh, follow me there. Find out if I actually tweet out WW84 is a hate fuck. Uh, that's where you do it. RM he, underscore Del Noche. He won't, but you'll have to fucking follow him to find out. Um, <laughs> a little, little known story about Kent. When we went from 140 characters to 280 characters, Kent legit fucking called me. He called me and was like, dude, I have timed every shit I've taken in the last three years to 140 characters. What the <laughs> fuck am I supposed to do now that I have 280? I can't shit that long. <laughs> and I said, dude, it's easy. More burritos. And he was like, fuck, man, you got the answers for everything. Like, you have the, all the answers. And he just went on with his life. And now he stopped eating burritos. There's no fucking tweets. I don't know what's going on with this guy anymore. Like, it's, like he switched to lasagna, and all of a sudden he doesn't need to shit anymore. He's a fucking cone head. Oh, my God. All right, you can also follow the show on Twitter, at Ritual Misery. Uh, be sure to join our conversation in Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Yeah. You can find all these links and more ways to support the show over at ritualmisery.com. That, all of we that are, is true. Oh, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. I needed you to stall for half a second while I programmed the outro music because I forgot to do that before okay, the show. Okay, great. Great. Speaking of the outro music, great place because I want to say a huge thank you to Kevin McLeod for allowing not only us to use your music, but also pretty much the entire internet. I would say three out of every four podcasts that I listen to and about seven out of eight YouTube channels I watch use Kevin McLeod's music. Yes. So on behalf of the entire internet, thank you so much, Kevin McLeod. And with that, we're out. <laughs> Thanks for listening. For Amos, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. And shit, I still forgot to fucking change that, that ending graphic because I suck at life. <laughs>